There was the captain, dead ahead, his fat body nearly blocking the corridor. He bellowed, Stop that running at once! Brett? Beautiful. Is that enough of a bellow for you? Let's try it one more time. See if it, it sounded really good, but if we're going to go for a bellow, let's see if we can... Let's okay. push, push the machine as far as it can go. All right, once more. Stop that running at once! One more time, Ben. Stop that running at once! I think we got more out of the first one, actually, Brett. <clears throat> okay. I really enjoyed directing, Dan, because Mel Brooks said of, of Marty Feldman, you just had to get both his eyes pointing in the right direction and say, go be brilliant. And that's one kind of directing and one kind of acting. But Dan has always said to me that he thinks the better the actor, the more direction they actually require. And Dan is the best actor I know. And I love directing because he's very susceptible and responsive to the suggestions that I make. Jeff braced his legs. The Velcro boots seized the carpet and his feet slid in their looseness. He stumbled onto his hands and knee he stumbled onto his hands and knees. Where's your emergency mask? Let's let's take him uh, let's have a moment of discovery there. He's been yelling at this for the other thing. Nah. And all of a sudden he realized there's a new violation. Gotcha. Where's your emergency mask? Yeah. Another thing that was great about this project is well, Bruce and I started the company together. Um, and we d we've always derived a lot of joy from working together. A lot of joy, a lot of laughs, a lot of bad jokes. <laughs> Lots and, of bad jokes. Right. Well, that's important. Uh, and this was a chance for us to return to the forge of what we, one of the things we love the most about it is working together and, and being ourselves and being unrestrained artistically and just having fun in the studio. Jeff patted his hip. The space station was under meteor alert. He was supposed to carry the emergency oxygen mask. He was supposed to carry the emergency oxygen mask in a cape. Don't rush through it and find. Take the breath after mask if you. Can. Yes, that's a good place. He was supposed to carry the emergency oxygen mask in case an emet in case a meteor punctured the station. I had it a minute ago. It must have fallen off. This was one of our first One Voice productions, a uh, new imprint we started because we wanted to get more audio out every year, and our full cast productions are so complex and so time-consuming, we are maxed out on what we can do with those. But we love doing this so much, we wanted to make more audiobooks. And I was particularly happy to find this one, Space Station Rat, because it, it is a very rare book, hard science fiction, for the third, fourth, fifth grade level. While you were running... Another reason not to. Quiet again, narration. Jeff had to agree. Meteors made him nervous. They reminded him that blacks they reminded him that black space, empty and deadly, waited just on the other side of the walls. Nanny glided to a stop next to him. Jeff's emergency mask dangled from a gripper. Jeff's emergency mask. Uh-uh. This is he's, it's a it's a bit embarrassing for him. She's she's come right. Up she's with this busted thing that he, him. He dropped, right, exactly. Jeff's emergency mask dangled from a gripper. He clipped it to his belt. Messy boy. Messy boy. Always dropping your things. Always angering the captain. They will reprogram me if you do not behave. And what I especially liked about this was it gave Dan a chance to be a demented, slightly hostile robot. We are late. Walk, walk, walk. Which I knew he'd be excellent at. You mean you had you had the idea that that was in me somewhere? I knew it was there. I don't know what gave you that Just idea. reached into your soul and pulled out that inner cranky robot. I just knew in the right place. You, you knew the right place to dig, I guess. <laughs>